All right, it's just going to be the three of us, so I'll make it quick and easy peasy since we already know each other. We all know what's up. So today we're going to be learning about MongoDB. And <clears throat> so far, you guys have done an amazing job doing the first website, the cat website, your board game, also the Jiffy. And now we're into the last project, which takes about two weeks to complete, which is the Make Reddit. In this project, you'll be will, <clears throat> you'll be learning how to build your own database, connect it to the your to your project, and then have have it communicate back and forth, sending data. <clears throat> Again, if you guys have any questions or help, you can email us. You can we're always available for you guys, so we can help you out with any any concerns that you have or any problems that you're having with your code. For today's attendance, it's going to be Bitly. The code is going to be Mongo. So. Make sure you get that attendance so that we can have proof for the next students next quarter. We want to get more students. Yeah. Would you be down to teach? I'd be down, but yeah. I think I've got a break refining my skills. Yeah. yeah. I mean, down. usually you refine them as you teach. <laughs> That's yeah, usually well. how I do it. Yeah. For us, for example, we didn't, we didn't have anyone to teach it. We decided to start teaching last spring quarter. We did the course on our own. Like we would just have checkpoints, making sure that we all did the assignments. And using all that material that we learned, we created our own. And that's how we refined our own skills. Yeah. And it'll be a little bit easier now since, since the next instructors won't have to deal with creating the content. It's already created. It's just more of how can we improve it, which is still refining. It's constant improvement. <clears throat> Anyhow, yes, the code is Mongo. So assignment four for this week, you guys are going to be doing make Reddit. Essentially, uh, you have two weeks to do it. However, the reason why it's two weeks is because it takes a while. It is a big assignment. So we split it into two weeks. So just get to get to halfway, halfway through the make Reddit, which I think it's like step seven or step eight. And then from there, you guys can work on the second part the, the next week. <clears throat> As always do before midnight of this Sunday. Any questions regarding the project that you're going to be working on this week or anything that we covered? Awesome. Resources, code path. If you guys have no any if you guys know any Android engineers, we need some because I'm trying to also start teaching Android development, not just iOS. But we're currently accepting also not just the student applications but also instructor or tech fellow applications. Hackathons, I know y'all are into hackathons. There's tons of hackathons out there. I know some of you, some of the students went to San Diego Hacks, SD Hacks, this past weekend. But there's always more hackathons out there, and they even give travel reimbursements. So if you guys want to go to some of these hackathons on mlh.io, most of these, or at least I think one fourth of these hackathons have travel reimbursements, which cover like your flight or at least give you some money to go to the hackathon. So take a look at MLH.io page. <clears throat> they're probably not have been updated yet, uh, but later on they're gonna add more like for example uh, SB hacks, which is uh, the UCSB Santa Barbara. There's also going to be Tree Hacks, which is Stanford's hackathon. They also give travel reimbursements. There's a lot of hackathons that are going out there, and with the skills that you guys are learning, I think you guys are more than fit to be in these hackathons. Maybe. I'm down. Hiking. Yeah. But it's during it's during <clears throat> it's during winter quarter, so like it's kind of hard. So today we're gonna be learning how to set up a database. This I'm gonna show you the most foundational skills for any software engineer in general. How to set up a database from scratch. Usually, we're not going to do everything from scratch, scratch, but we're going to use a tool called MLAP, which is MongoDB's version of a database. So first step, I want you guys to go to MLAP.com and create an account. MLAP. Mm -hmm. MLAP. Right. Only one hundred megabytes. Yeah. Well, it's for testing. That's why. <laughs> what do you? It's free. 
for free. free. Yeah, yeah. If it's free, that's hella good. It's not the heck. <laughs> I mean, you can set up your own server and everything, but that's just gonna cost more money to maintain and time. These guys, are, these guys are doing, yeah, these guys are doing everything for you. So create your account, and then create a database from the portal. You guys see your portal is gonna look something like this, and then it should say create new. Right here, create new. You guys able to create it? Three cluster. No, already clustered? <clears throat> yeah. Then throw that here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not in my. That's my movie. I'm not in my It's different. It's different. Yeah. So, I'm not. Log in or sign up? Yeah, I'm just sign up. Are you already signed up? Yeah, okay. Sign in. Okay. Yeah, you can just sign in. Oh, I think that's fine. Oh, that's where it takes you? Yeah, it's where it redirects you. Ah, okay. So create your account, but go back to N1. Yeah, so I'm going to create a cluster of the free one. Yeah, the free one. Create the free one. Bro, are you going to fucking charge me? No. It's a free. It's a free. Free cluster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, free yeah, yeah, cluster. Mm -hmm. What the fuck, bro? Yeah, dude. It's where we were. Alright, so now. Go to M1. The thing is, it didn't give me any uh, confirmation. Yeah, well, I mean, it didn't give me a username. It just signed up with my name. Did you, um, did you also send me an email? Not yet. Oh, well, I didn't. You use a personal right? Yeah, it's personal play time. We got a filter. Yeah, because you say it has to filter it, process it, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I, I have oh, a live account. Mm -hmm. No, it would be, yeah, I just go with the build new. Is this what you're going to say? Uh, yeah, my phone. My phone, my phone. Okay, in that case, you have to go to the Oh, yeah, wait, I think you sign in with MongoDB. Yeah, you just sign in with MongoDB. Oh, 
a probar el alimento. So I would use a different Oh, okay, well, I used to Google one. I didn't I'm mean, even one. <laughs> so I am fucking. Wait, do you put your muscle? It's just that it's more simple in the M lab, but they messed it up. Like they used to call it collections here. And everything was more organized. I guess. <clears throat> Sorry. Alright, perfect. Now let's get coded. Now I want you guys to create your go to your Atom, download the project starter. Awesome. And Dang. We're gonna we're gonna go into the first step. So go to your DB connection JS file. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a, above index here. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, sir. Well, alrighty. So now we need to initialize our database. How do we connect our project using 
the using code, actual code, because our server, our database is just living somewhere in the cloud. So now we need to figure out how do we connect to it. Well, first, we're going to be using a library called Mongoose, and we're going to require it. This is how we're going to utilize Mongoose. Essentially, what this is doing right here, the require method, it's the same as Python using import, import, and then like PyPal or something. Import Mongoose. Something like that. What happened? Yeah, dbconnection.js. And using that, now we're going to. <clears throat> we're going to do mongoose.promise. Require Bluebird. You're going to get more in depth into the homework and get more understanding of what the heck these things do. But for now, all it does is that these are like two requirements that you need that are going to help JavaScript understand that we're going to be connecting to a database. So now, using that URL that you guys copied, I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. I'm going to create my own database here. Boom. There you go. Awesome. And then, I'm going to create a variable const connect equal to mongoose.connect URL. There we go. Mod and then lastly we're going to do module exports equals connect. So essentially every all that we're doing here is <clears throat> we're connecting to our database using URL and mongoose. And then we export connection variable. So this, this connection variable is going to be used throughout all the other files. And you will see how. So now that we have established our connection with the database, now we need to now we need to figure out how what are we going to do with this connection. Now that we're connected, let's actually do something with that connection. So I'm going to go into now step three. Go into my models, go into your model folder, right here. Now we're going to go into our models and go to chat.js. If you have already taken 122A, this is going to make sense to you, but if not, it's okay. Essentially, what we're going to be doing here is <clears throat> we're going to build the blueprint or the schema of our chat. So what is each chat message going to carry? Message, the date, time that it was sent, and also the sender. Who sent this message? Right? No. It's going to be a group chat. So it's going to be for everyone. For, for simple, just for making it simpler. But in this case now, now we know how to we need. We already thought of what the chat message contains, the attributes of it. Now we're actually going to build it. So here I'm going to call mongoose. Require mongoose again. And then I'm going to create a const variable called schema. And <clears throat> this is going to be mongoose schema. Essentially we're going to be using mongoose's Mongoose's library to help us create the schema for us without having to do a lot of extra code. And they make it so easy and so understandable so that it's way, it, it just makes it faster for everyone that's coding. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my chat schema. In this case, I'm going to call a const variable again. And it's going to be a new schema. 
So what, what do we say that each message is going to have? First is the message. Oops. And <clears throat> the what is the message going to be? What type of, is it going to be? Yes. Type string. And then the next thing is the sender. Who sent it? What is that going to be? What type? String as well. And we also want to know the time that it was sent. So for that, all you need to do is call the timestamp. Timestamps true. There you go. What happened? Well, I don't think it's why epic and sending a function. This is because these are the attributes. That are that we're creating, and these are the attributes that it comes by with default. Okay, this one's with creation. These ones we're creating. Okay. And the timestamp, whenever we create any object, Mongoose is going to create a, stamp, a timestamp for it automatically, no matter what. Okay. But if you don't want it, you can overwrite it and say false. But in this case, we want to know when that object was created, so we know what time it was sent. So timestamps is something that's already built in on any schema object or any model that you create. Awesome. Make sure to close off your like brackets real good. So um, yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. All right. So now we built the schema for each message. Now, now that we know what we're going to be sending, now that we connect to our database and we have developed schema or essentially a data type that we're going to be sending throughout our database, which is a message or a chat, now we need to know how do we actually send a message to, <clears throat> to the database. So in here, let's go over the first one. How do we get one? A message. I'm 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 going to the chat route JS. It's under your routes folder, and you're going to go to chat route dot JS. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be implementing a CRUD method. Create, read, and that's it. We're going to focus on the first two: create and read. But we're going to focus here on how to read data from the database, how to retrieve messages. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, let's do that one. Here's what we need to do first. First, we need to call Express, which is also another library of another library type for JavaScript that allows it to manage the handlers. So, for example, let mm, I me. Mean, you guys ever see how you go to like a domain, and it has a forward slash, that's a route. It's, it's taking you to the route main. And you see how sometimes there's like, or for example, Facebook, facebook.com slash messages, that's another route as well. But if you go to this route, that'll take you to just the main page. But there's also like the groups route. <clears throat> so essentially what we're doing here, express handles, Express.js is a library that handles the routing for us. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using Express. And we're also going to be using a, a parser for inputs. Which is going to be const body parser. Require body parser. And we're also going to use connect to the DB by using the connect. If you guys recall from our 
dbconnection.js. We're going to call that function, that variable here, by using require dot dot db connection. Why did I do it this way compared to the others? Mm -hmm. Yep. Go to the parent directory and then I'm telling it, oh, use the, the, the db connection DS. And from here, I'm calling the export. Remember what I exported from the db connection? I exported the connect. So using that, I'm using my connect variable that I exported from my db connection file. Now, I'm going to create a chats object. And here, I'm going to require the models chat. Same thing here. I'm calling the chat.js, the one that we built previously. And we're telling it that we're going to be reading data in the form of chats using the model chat.js schema that we built. So here, use use chat model schema that we created. And now we need to create the router for index page. And for that, we're just going to call const const router equals express dot router. Perfect. So we created our router. Now we need to tell JS, okay, what are we going to do in the index page? In the main page, that's where we're going to be loading all these messages that we want. So in order to do that is tell browser what to do when it's on the main page. In this case, load previous messages. Awesome. So we're going to do router router.route forward slash. This is the main index. This is how you represent the main index of the page by just one forward slash. And here we're going to call dot get Request result next, and we're going to do a closure function and saying, okay, the result. If we get a result, then we're going to set the header content type application JSON and the rest status code equals to 200. <clears throat> so essentially now we're, what does this look like to you guys when you're looking at it? You're basically configuring the server, what to do. So if the user goes to the main page, tell them that it's okay. It's a 200 response code. For example, what if the user tries to go to like the, the user page, but they don't have access to it? And then the, the the programmer has to tell the server what to do when someone tries to go into someone's page but they don't have access to it unless they find it. They could do something like, oh, give them an error, give them a 404, give them 500, whatever. They decide what to do. So now, if we get a good response, 200, we're going to connect. And using another closure, we're going to use the let data equals chats.find message anonymous and then using those chats the messages that we get we're going to call chats.find all the chats then 
chat closure consult uh, not console res.json chat so essentially we're, what we're doing here is remember, you, remember what we did previously on how we get data from JSON remember in base query how we convert the data from the JSON and we use that data into our function same thing exact here we get the data from our own server we're going to get all the messages from anonymous and then we're going to find from those chat we're going to convert everything into a JSON that's all we're doing. We're converting all the, the data that we get into a JSON format. So in here, it's a connect to database and then find all chats that have been sent. <clears throat> If we had users in this case, then we would change this message to user, a variable user. And we would do a for loop that iterates through every user and get the message that was sent by each one. But in this case, we're all going to be one user, anonymous, to make it easy. All right, so now we know how to read data. Now let's figure out how to create data. If you guys go into your index.js function, <clears throat> and here we're going to be looking at what we need to do here. So now we, we need to put everything together. How do we put the database connection together? How do we know that our main page is going to load all the messages? How do we connect it to our chat route? How do we connect it to our DB connection database? The index is where we put everything together in one. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to create an HTTP module called const HTTP equals to require HTTP dot create server app. This is how we tell our fun our project that hey we're going to be like creating a server a mini server in our computer by doing requires HTTP module because you guys know <clears throat> we're dealing with status codes so we need the HTTP module in order to handle that for us the two the two hundreds the four oh fours all that good stuff now we're gonna use socket.io module and this module const io equals require socket the io and we're going to be using http <clears throat> this module is used for live lifetime content so this is how we're going to be telling the user that someone else is typing by using socket the io which is a really nifty tool that a lot of programmers use for real-time data or for real-time communication. <clears throat> and now we're going to use the body parser middleware. App.use body parser dot json. And now we're also going to be using the routes that we implemented. App.use chats chat router. So we're telling it, all right, chat, chat router JS, you're going to be in this route right here. Chat. So all the chats are going to be going to this directory, this route right here. And then we're going to set, we're going to serve our HTML using const chat equal require dot models 
forward slash chat. Make sure that you have been putting chat capital, capital T, and it's case sensitive. Or else you're going to be getting a lot of errors. And then our dead database connection. Whoops, oh wait, no. This goes down here. And now we're going to use also our connect, which is the DB connection. And for the survey HTML, my bad, this is supposed to be app.use express.static during name plus client. <clears throat> this is just to tell whichever browser that we're using that hey, we're going to be using like a live application. And the client is the, the browser that you're using. So that way it'll tell you where where the users are accessing and keep sort of like a log of what's been going on with your website. Alrighty. Yeah. Make sure the spelling capitalization it's all good you good all right so now we're going to actually be implementing the socket. So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here in between these parentheses, make space. So I made an opening in this bracket right here, and this is just gonna, like, basically keep a log of what's been going on. For example. Socket dot on disconnect. Then we're going to do function console dot log user disconnected. <clears throat> All we're doing here basically is just telling our socket what to do when every user logs in, logs out, sends a message. Or does something. The next one would be this is the most interesting one. What how do you tell when someone is typing? This is where socket IO comes in clutch. So what we're doing here is socket on stop typing. Then socket dot broadcast. Emit, notify, stop typing. Make sure your cases are clutch, are really good. If you just spell any of this, it's going to be an error. But all we're doing is socket, so this is the cool thing about socket, is that it knows when you're typing and when you're not. And when you are typing, it's going to broadcast this notify stop typing to the other user that oh, someone is typing. That's when the message is going to pop up. Yeah.
Oh wait, this is the wrong one. This is when they stop typing. There's another one that goes before that. This one is for the someone is typing. So this one is actually the, the one that matters, the typing. Yeah, no wonder it didn't make sense. <clears throat> Beta, and then bracket, socket, dot broadcast, dot init, notify, typing. User. Data user message data dot message. So all we're doing here is when someone is typing, <clears throat> we're gonna emit the message saying who is typing and the message at this point. and then stop typing. And now we need to do configure what happens when they actually send the message. We're gonna do socket on chat message message. Let's do um, let's do socket dot broadcast dot emit receive and we're going to tell it what what we received in this case it was a message so now our server from our end we know that we received a message so now what we have to do here is we're going to do now we want to save the message the database. And save the chat also. So here we're going to call connect from our <coughs> DB connection JS and we're going to call then DB We're gonna do. We're gonna create our our chat message variable equal to new chat message. It is going to be the message and the sender is going to be anonymous. There we go. And now we need to tell the message to save itself. Chat message dot save. So what do we do here? Chat is from our chat.js model. And we're giving it we're passing it on the variable that we're sending. In this case, when someone sends a message, it's gonna create a chat. Schema object using the message that we sent. This could be user, or in this case, for simplicity, we use the value. And after calling the chat message, we're going to save it. This is all within the DB connection connect variable that we have. So, simple stuff so far. So, here we're just telling the server, hey, we received the message. Okay, now we'll save it to the database. So now, if we launch this, let's try it out. <clears throat> oh yeah, you're gonna have to install a couple things. So if you have them, oh, you don't have Windows. Fudge. If you guys go on the README, you're gonna have to install Node. 
So go go into the README file. Yeah. And then go ahead and go to nodejs.org. And then right here, um, put the recommended for most users. It should automatically give you the download the one for Windows for your operating system. Oh, you already have it? Oh, that's perfect. In that case, Go to, no, you don't need to open anything. Go to the directory where your project is located. In my case for Mac, it's just CD, and then I just, yeah, your terminal. So for me, it's a little bit easier. I just do CD, change directory. I can just drag and drop the folder, boom. Yeah, that, that's, that's a big plug. From there, on Windows, I have no idea, but let me see. Yeah. Windows CD drag folder. Oh, you can just copy it. So you go to your folder, you right click it, and then it should say copy directory. Okay. So go. Oh, that works too? Oh, okay. Click and drag. So you guys are on your Mongo chat folder project, right? Yeah. Okay. Now you're just going to do npm start. It should be uh, it should be node, and then that's it. Oh no! Man. Wait. How do you get the heck out of here? To exit, press dot exit. Okay. Node and then index.js. Cannot find module. Oh. <clears throat> so you're going to do npm install. That's it. So that way it'll install all the all the modules that Press, Mongoose, Body Parser. I don't know if it's NPM for you guys. NPM? Okay, for is it installing? Oh, okay. Don't worry, I had this baby since the beginning of college. So that's on uh, Yeah, so now once it installs, you should be able to do node oh, index okay. index.js. Hmm. So Mother cracker. Okay. Yeah. Where? Yeah, no, no space. It worked? Oh, okay. Uh, where are that you? Hmm. Index .js, line 13. I think. Oh, 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 I forgot, I forgot. <clears throat> we need to tell it what port we're using. Yeah. 
My bad. Just add that under IO. Make sure this chat, the require, is with capital C. It's in line 13. Yeah. Is it the aisle? Creator using HTTP. <coughs> Let me look it up. But well, you guys are getting the same error, right? Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be in our routes JS. Yeah. Chat route. Let me check. Body parser, connect, DB connection, chats, model chats, router, let's see, we can express router. Oh, we didn't export our router. Yes, sir. Module.exports equals router. Yeah. So we need to figure out how do we send this router to our index, which we did the same with DB connection. We exported the connection version. Yeah. There you go. Easy money. All right. Oh, nope, mine worked. Running, running on port five thousand. Did yours work? No. Yeah, that's fine. But it should say running on port. Yeah, there's just one. Don't worry about that. Yeah, no, you just. On the index at JS? Okay. <coughs> yeah, DB connection. Now it should just say something like running on port 5000. Perfect. If that's the case, now you can just go to localhost, colon, 5000. There you go. And you should be on your web chat application. Let's see. Let me type something. How would this is German. Yeah. And if you reload it, whoops. What? They didn't save it to my database, bro. Did did yours save? No. No? It didn't save? What the freak? Huh. Huh. 
Oh my gosh. I Yeah. Data is not defined? Where? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know what happened. Oh, you figured it out? Oh, nothing safe? But. Hmm. Potential message? No. Huh. Let me check. Are you sure? Next TV. Chat stop fine. Let me do constant. I mean, you heck along as long as you want. This should be on your terminal. The warnings are on, like on the terminal. Oh, okay. Yeah, you won't. You're not gonna see those on the on the actual console of the of uh, from. It's not letting me connect, bro. Yeah, it's not connecting to my to my URL. Let me see. Let me look this up. Save edit note. Oh. 
Oh. It's probably because I misspelled something. Chaps.find is not a function. Control what? Hmm. That's not fine. No, I mean. Let me let me put in here console dot log connected to db console dot log fetching messages. Huh? I'm looking at the chat route.js. Oh, oh, wait. Bruh. I figured it out. This is not supposed to be here. This little bracket right here. Not supposed to go there. Supposed to go there. So let's delete. Oh crap. Let's delete everything right here. This one, this function that right here. Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing. Let's redo it. Let's do connect dot then. It should be one set right here. Brackets? Everything except the last one? Here. Yeah, everything except the last one. Connect. Dot then db. So here, you see how I have this function right here? Yeah, just press enter, no brackets right there. And here I'm gonna let data equal chats.find message. Because it, it's not a. Because we're doing this with db, I think. I think it's because, of, wait a minute, did I accidentally delete it? Bruh, never mind. I actually deleted it here. Leave it like this, leave it, leave it how it was again, never mind. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I think it was. Hold on, hold on. Okay. You're right, you're right. I should do that. Um. Mm -hmm. 
No, yeah, this is fine. Let me check. Bro. So it's not that. Almost bluebird. It has to do something with a bluebird. Did it install everything? Oh! We didn't export our chat, dude. So go to your chat.js. Yeah. Let chat equal. So first we need to create the chat model. And then we're going to create the chat model using the chat schema. And then we're going to export it. No, this one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did it work this time? Let me check. GG, yep, I got my old messages now. No, because back then it wasn't sending anything. Does that make sense? So, start sending messages. Yeah, yeah start sending them and then refresh it. That's what it did. And it didn't save it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I got something. But then again, user disconnected. Yeah. Yours says user disconnected? Yeah. Oh. Okay, that link. That, remember that link that you guys put on your DB connection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, there's it should be brackets. And you have to take out the brackets here and paste in the user. The actual user of the data. Did I use it? Well, that's the user. User? And then pass it. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. 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 I thought I did, but I put it in brackets. Okay. No. The orange? <laughs> Make sure you check out the bracket. Oh, <laughs> Thank you.
So this is the connected. When you have a projection, you want to be here to connect to the Yeah, it's a little bit different than um than what do you mean?
Thank you. 